Only 12 hours after exiting the timber nest the evening before, public land hunters Zach Fahrenbaugh and Aaron Warbritton are back. Today, they must hang a new stand on the adjacent ridge to accommodate the day's southerly wind. As Zach and Aaron settle into their stands, 100 miles to the northeast, Mike Reed and Jared Mills begin their day in the urban zone. Well, it's Wednesday, November 16th, and uh, Jared and I got the day off, and we're set up for the morning hunt. We're in the urban zone this morning. I'm uh, focused on trying to fill that tag until some of my better bucks start showing up on camera on my farm. I haven't rut hunted in here ever, really. I've been part of this hunt for about seven years now, and I've never really come down in here uh, during the rut, mainly because of other hunters. But um, I've always gotten pictures of good deer. And this year, for whatever reason, there's not been as many hunters in here. We're gonna just sit back and enjoy the woods waking up. Well, we're gonna wrap up the hunt here. It's about 9.30. Uh, it's been pretty slow. Right around eight o'clock, we had a doe uh, coming down the ridge here with a little three and a half year old behind her and then a couple one and a half year olds and a buck that looked like a smaller antlered four and a half year old or so came up. They were kind of pushing each other around and uh, just as quick as it got interesting, it died again. We didn't see another deer, so. We're gonna make the move to that farm that Jared's been having all those big encounters, uh, or those encounters with those big bucks, and so hopefully we have a good sit. I think the wind ought to be a little bit better this afternoon, so hopefully we see some good activity. Mike and Jared's morning ends slowly, but on public land, the action is heating up. And there's a buck right there on top of the ridge. Pretty good buck. It's right up on the ridge. Oh, yeah. Coming this way. Oh. oh yeah. Well, it's about one o'clock and uh, just saw a buck cruising up on this ridge. He was coming down the trail like he was gonna come like we planned him to, but he started to cut down, down into the ditch down there. He hit our wind. He was about, I guess he must have been 30, because I shot him for about 35. I shot right over his back. It's a bummer. He said all day, day and a half and so far, just to mess it up. Son of a gun. that wind, man. Yeah. Well, see, if he would have done what we wanted him to, we'd have been fine. I can't believe, why did he pick to go down right there? Dang it, man. I'm pretty bummed about that one. I mean, that's a four or five year old buck. 
don't know if you guy gets another chance now. Might have just ruined my chance. That's proof right there. I mean, just looked up, looked on top of the ridge. Here's a big buck coming down, swinging down into this bedding area. So, all is not over. We still got a lot of daylight left, but man, it sucks to, to have a chance like that slip away. We use many Frigid Forge products, but Plot Screen may be their most unique. Planted in mid to late spring, it grows 8 to 12 feet tall in only a few months. We use Plot Screen to create visual barriers near public roads and to improve our entry and exit routes in otherwise open areas, so we can get to and from our stands without the deer seeing us. Several years ago, Hoyt completely changed the way we looked at bows when they introduced their first carbon model. Their lightweight carbon design reduces vibration and feels much warmer to the touch in a cold stand. Hoyt is still making carbon bows and improving on the design every year. In fact, their Carbon Defiant is their best carbon bow to date. Hunting length stabilizers like the Fuse Carbon Torch FX help us to balance our bows so they jump straight forward at the shot. And the new custom front dampener reduces vibration and shot noise. Plus, they just look cool with their custom color options. One of the ways that we run trail cameras on public land is to take one of our muddy ProCam 12s deep into a bedding area and leave it for the full season. We feel like this is a great way to learn more about an area without spending much time there, and we have confidence that the battery life in our cameras will last the whole season. After grabbing a quick bite to eat, Jared and Mike are back on the property where Jared has encountered several mature bucks. Well, it's about 2.30 here on the afternoon of November 16th, and Mike and I are ready to roll for the evening. Finally got a, a nice consistent breeze, probably 15 miles an hour or so out of the southeast. Uh, it's still fairly warm, unfortunately, uh, probably mid-60s. Um, but we have a, a cold front coming in a couple days, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm kind of tired of hunting this hot weather. But this is the farm where I've been having a lot of, most of my hunts lately, but a lot of good hunts. And uh, again, try to hang on up here. It's getting uh, a little bit gusty now, so hopefully the deer are moving tonight. As Jared and Mike watch a steady flow of deer coming into their food plot on public land, Zach and Aaron have a buck heading in their direction.
opportunity there. That 10 point that Sean and I saw yesterday just came down the hill. Had a doe down in this ditch, but our wind was blowing right to him and the doe caught wind of us. She took off running away from him. We still got probably 20 minutes left here. The wind's good for the shot that we want, but the deer just keep doing what we don't want them to do, kind of skirting us going down into these ditches, which makes it tough. Uh, it's hard to guess what they're gonna do. We're probably gonna come back here in a couple days. The bucks are in here. That buck that I missed would have been the sixth shooter that we've seen in here, so we're gonna give it a break and probably come back here when we get a little bit different wind. When hunting this specific bedding area, we were going deep into public land early in the morning. By using our Cabela's headlamp, we were able to sneak in quietly without spooking many deer, and we were able to pick a tree for a tree stand and get set up before the deer came back in the morning. To be able to hunt this bedding area on multiple wind directions, we had to hang and hunt. By using the Muddy Vantage and the Pro Climbing Sticks, we were able to get the tree stands hung quickly and quietly before the deer came back to the bedding area that morning. When doing hang and hunt style setups, sometimes we have to settle for trees with less than ideal cover. On this hunt, we were in a pretty open tree that was at eye level with most of the deer, but Aaron and I were both wearing real tree extra camo, and even with the sun shining on us during the middle of the day, no deer detected us in our tree stand. Some ground blinds leave you feeling kind of boxed in and depressed, like you are sitting in a closet with the door cracked open, but not the redneck blinds. These blinds have lots of windows, including their vertical corner windows, giving you a full field of view so you can really enjoy your time outdoors, even if you aren't exactly outdoors. The action has been steady all evening for Jared and Mike. As the light begins to fade, a double drop tine giant that Jared calls Rocky appears out of nowhere. about a uh, camera light here uh, but it was a pretty awesome night in the stand saw a ton of deer I don't know eight or nine bucks maybe and plenty of does and uh, two deer that were mature including Rocky the deer I really wanted to see tonight I knew he's in this area and what the crazy thing is we had so many deer come from where we saw him and they all funneled up this mode path right into our food plot and of course he's the only one only deer that didn't do that how to try to call to him he's kind of going the other way but we had deer in front of us and they kind of worked their way off and it, because he was so far away and it was windy we didn't think a grunt would work so we tried rattling and he definitely looked for a while but then he 
didn't like it you know the does that were close to us ran off that way and I'm not sure if he saw them and that's kind of what made him go the other way too or or if he just didn't like the sound I'm not sure but that's pretty awesome to lay eyes on him that's my second encounter with that deer and both have been about that same distance unfortunately but hopefully I can try to close in on him I have a lot of hunting time here coming up so he's a definitely a cool old buck and would love to get a closer look and potentially get a shot at him he's he's a pretty cool deer small diameter arrows like Easton's FMJ series make sense for many reasons they penetrate very well and drift less in a crosswind the FMJ is also the perfect weight for whitetail hunting we use trophy rocks for five reasons. The deer love them, they create a healthier herd, they are portable and easy to put out, we can keep them off the ground so the deer don't have to eat dirt, and finally, they are long lasting. Ozonix makes two models, the HR200 and the HR300. The 200 is more affordable but lacks some of the features and produces less ozone than the 300. But even with these limitations, we have had good success fooling most of the deer most of the time using this more affordable option. My hunting arrows tipped with rocket steel heads are just as accurate as arrows tipped with the field points. Every year, I check just to be sure, but every year the impact point out to 50 yards is identical. The accuracy of these broadheads gives me a lot of confidence. On dry years, the last thing you want to do is till the ground and dry out the first several inches of seed bed. However, with a no-till seeder like the RTP Genesis, you can precisely place the seed right in the soil at the correct depth where it can germinate using existing moisture. Having a true no-till seeder is a tremendous advantage. On the morning of November 18th, Caleb and Taylor Byers are finally able to get back in the woods to hunt for the giant buck they have nicknamed Lockdown. Well, it's the morning of November 18th and we just got dressed here and we're getting ready to walk in. This is the first day back after four days of work. A cold front just blew in today. It's supposed to be falling temperatures all day. So we feel like this is probably our best chance yet of putting this buck on the ground. So we've already seen him twice. Hopefully a third time's the charm. So we're gonna basically just slip around the back side of this big ridge and slip in the back door of the stand. So one thing that, that helps us, there's cows in here and the ground's normally pretty damp in the mornings. We sit all day so we don't have to worry about bumping deer on the way out. We'll see if it can work out this morning.
pretty sure I just shot the biggest deer of my life. He came in with a doe. That's the third encounter with him out of this stand. Well, out of this area. We moved the stand up here and I think it just paid off. I cannot wait to get down and check that arrow. I just shot the biggest deer of my life. I can't believe that just happened. Cover. Looks good. I see a lot of bubbles, but I think I heart shot him, so yeah, there's blood everywhere. He didn't go. Oh my gosh, he didn't go. I don't know how we didn't see him go down. He didn't go 30 or 40 yards. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. Man, what, what a deer. Uh, we named this buck Lockdown. We uh, encountered this buck last year and uh, he was locked down with a doe, so the, the name instantly stuck. Didn't have another single encounter with him last year, but uh, this year he's been a lot more visible. Uh, this is the third encounter and it's been a chess match. Just putting all the pieces together, that's what drives us crazy. That's what all the sleepless nights over this deer, you know. I probably slept two hours last night just because of the anticipation of this hunt. I really thought we had, ultimately had a, a great shot. Just keying in on these doe bedding areas has, has been the ticket for us. But uh, as a hunter, you dream of stuff like this and you never think that it's gonna happen to you. And <laughs> it's just been one incredible year and I can't even put it into words for us that this deer probably put on 70 inches from four to five. I would have never guessed that this buck was going to turn into this, but I can't thank our family enough for, you know, helping out with Huxley and, and just allowing us to do what we love, you know, just keeping us encouraged, you know, keep us fueled and it has paid off in a huge way. After the rut's lull, November 18th was a great day of buck activity, spurred by the passage of an early morning cold front. Caleb and Taylor Byers were finally in the right place at the right time when the giant buck followed a doe within bow range. While out for a quick drive, Greg Clements spots four bucks crossing the county road on the tail of a hot doe. For 15 minutes, he watches as the bucks jockey for position to steal the doe totally ignoring Greg's vehicle parked only 50 yards away. In addition, our muddy trail cameras reveal several locations where mature bucks were on their feet during daylight. The rut's lull has passed. There is still one good week and then this exciting time will end. But for now, those still carrying tags live for each moment. How can you do anything less when you are chasing November?